So we're gonna start with the drive. For our drive, we ran 480, so 48 to 60 on um, 600 carts on 2.75 wheels. We ran this drive for states, and we found it was really good compared to 453 to 5. Uh, because the acceleration is a lot faster, especially when you have a full goal. And then drives like 452.75 are just way too slow. Uh, top speed for defending wall stick and stuff. So this is just a nice in between. As well as uh, with our D-score mech, this drive is really short. So it was really nice to be able to fit everything in size. We uh, had to run one stacked one in the back, which kind of links with the PTO, which we'll explain later. And then moving on to the intake, uh, we'll start at the bottom. We had these pretty large ramps compared to most teams that we kind of curved around uh, the ring and how our bottom stage or intake will work. So the ring would be able to uh, ride up it pretty easily. Uh, pretty well, that can just get it normally. And then uh, moving on with the bottom stage a little bit, we decided to run 1.625 wheels, mainly just for size again, so that we can be short in the front. Um, one interesting thing that we did with, that we didn't do on purpose, but it worked well, was kind of to prevent it from jamming, our pivot point on our intake was behind uh, where our hook is actually at, and that kind of just helped with jamming. Not sure why, it just did, so that's cool. Um, and then we didn't, we originally had a wedge out front, but it just uh, expanded out too far and we'd have to start an intake up so it could be in size. And then we realized we just didn't have to have the wedge. And then when we went into corners, we could just reverse our intake and it'd pop the second ring up. And second ring would sit on the standoffs so we can then just get the bottom ring. That uh, helped us that so we'd have to flip our intake out. So everything was a lot more simple. Moving on to the hook stage, uh, we had our hooks really low to the ground. We thought that would really help with jamming. It didn't seem to matter that much, and it just made fitting Odom a pain. But it uh, transitions really smoothly with how low it is into the hooks. At the top here, we did something uh, pretty interesting. So when we first had this on our uh, prototype design, which was very similar, we had the hook just be on the top of the C-channel down to the bottom, basically where it is now. But we found that the chain was too tight and we really didn't want to add a tensioner. So what we did was we essentially just drilled out the top hole an eighth of an inch and shifted it down. And then all these poly pieces, we shifted the hole down uh, perfectly. You can tell like this is not perfectly spaced an inch. So then when we do that and put the screw in, then it will force the two uh, sprockets to be slightly closer together so that the chain is like a lot looser and just overall better. Um, and then the other thing interesting at the top here is our pieces, plastic pieces, instead of running flex wheels. Uh, when we were testing, we realized that the flex wheels don't actually matter. You just need uh, a circular like shape so that the ring can flip around properly. So we decided that running these plastic pieces would just overall be lighter. And also the added benefit of being able to run a screw joint at the top which really helped with our D-score that we'll explain later because then we're able to tension the string on that same screw joint that everything is on and it keeps everything really braced. And then moving to the last thing on the intake, we have the intake PTO. So we saw this on a extra P, uh, like right after states. We realized that we want it because it t basically takes split intake and regular and combines it. So when it's in its regular position, we have this piston here that just closed and banded uh, shut. And when it's in its regular position, both will move together. But then we have a macro basically, so that when our uh, ring loads into the Lady Brown, it'll detect that and then PTO off with this piston here. And then only the bottom stage will spin. So we're able to just grab another ring really easily and hold it there since the hooks won't be moving. So that really helps for uh, doing like two on a wall stick at once, because then we're able to just efficiently do that and not to like line up twice. So with the Lady Brown, um, we ran these kind of silly funnels here, which helps us get like more angled and close to the wall, which theoretically would help with scoring an auto, but we can't. It just helps with range though. Um, on the Lady Brown, we just run Geo that I figured out in CAD, uh, just to make sure that we have like the maximum distance here. We kind of want the ring to not sit too angled or else it kind of gets silly with scoring. So we just, I just made this point like kind of in line with the wheels and then this point as far out and up as it can be to be fitting under the ladder and also be in size. Um, our bot actually wasn't in size, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> on the actual ring holders, we use poly here, which just kind of helps to keep the 
the mesh tension better and to make sure it doesn't sag and we reduce consistency. The ring holders is also what's kind of important. I don't think too many teams really figured this out, but having the ring be able to rotate a lot in this ring holding position really helps with scoring faster, especially on like bots with more range. You want to be able to score from range, but also from close up in your aligner. And just having a lot of play here really helps with that scoring being fast. So to do that, we mainly just have this being more spaced out. Instead of two inches, it's two and a half inches. And then also these pieces are as small as they can be to still be consistent with loading and descoring. We just run 66 RPM on two five and a half watts. Um, we just have some bracing here that makes things really easy. Flip out a liner because of 360. Uh, that's pretty much it for the Lady Brown. We also only run uh, encoder-based Lady Brown code instead of using a rotation sensor. Uh, and that was mainly just because at the time of building this, uh, well, we we're running it on screw joints, so there's no axle to run it across, and we just thought it would be lighter. Moving on to the clamp. This is one of my favorite parts. Poly clamp. I love poly clamp. If you get the goal. The idea behind this is that with traditional clamps, you have the standoffs down from the pivot. So when it's clamping onto the goal, this point is vertically down from where the pivot is. So when you're trying to clamp, so when you're trying to pull the goal out, you're actually inducing a torque on the arm because it's vertically lower. So just pulling straight out, even if you have your standoffs perfectly at the right angle and whatever, you're still pulling up on the clamp to some extent. But with poly clamp, we can have the tip of the standoff be directly in line with the pivot. <laughs> so this has a lot of air right now, but if it, even if it didn't, you can't pull the goal out. So like locking clamps, we just don't need it because we have poly geometry. <laughs> We also um, didn't have space to run a locking clamp, so this was just uh, beneficial, especially with the D-score being able to fit around this clamp. Yeah, it's significantly lower profile, and we can play with the piston geometry a lot to fit this standoff in here and stuff. Uh, it's triple stacked for strength. Ours was double stacked and it broke. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll kind of move on to the D-score. Not this D score, our first version D score. Well, it's actually like the third, but the first general idea. Uh, first, I'll explain kind of why we wanted D score and like the strategy behind it. Uh, so it kind of happened like pre states. So back in like January, we were thinking about D score could be important. And the general idea was that ring starving was becoming way more important. So if you could ring starve your opponent, uh, they just wouldn't be able to play the game basically and you'd win wall stakes. So the idea was that obviously negative corners exist and we know that, so we want to like use those. But a lot of the times, filling a, a goal of your opponent's color and then trying to negative it is really risky. We've seen teams try to do it and then they just don't get the goal in corner and you just insta lose. So the idea was that we would actually never use the D score and we just always play for negative corner every single match. And that would just allow us to uh, just get the negative corner and then worst case scenario, we just D score and it doesn't harm us. And what we're actually going to do is we're just going to score one of our color on the bottom and then five of the other team's color. So then if we want to D-score, we D-score all besides ours. So we still get points for that, but we can put in negative and it's still significant negative points to the other team. So when we first looked at designing it, we thought that a like rotational design like this wouldn't be possible because of like how the goal is and how hard it is to pull off the top. So we thought something like a linear slide would have to be uh, used. So obviously Vex linear slides suck. Everybody knows that. So we designed an all poly, or in this case, Delrin one. Um, this is like kind of put together jank. It was a lot better on the robot, but it basically works how linear Odom works. So we just have screws that slide in between this gap. And then this was very braced. There was half cuts going in between here. And this was essentially this part here. So this was the whole entire tower here with these curved parts at the top being this here. That's where this idea originally came from. So then what this allowed us to do is just have a pretty low friction slide. Um, and then we just had claws on here that would flip out uh, like horizontally and we would get under the bottom ring on the goal. Um, one issue that we had with that is also it's a singular use. So if we flipped out that claw and try to put it onto the ring and D-score, we just can't like flip it back in. So we wouldn't be able to use our Lady Brown again, which kind of sucked if we wanted to D-score like early in the match for some reason. Um, so that's one of the reasons we kind of went away from this. One cool thing about this though was uh, our use of like rollers here. 
So when we were testing this originally, this poly obviously wanted to bend a lot and kind of uh, bring this su section out and then just widen the screw gap. So what we actually did was we found that the force of the ring from the top of the mogul goal is gonna tilt this kind of that way. So it's gonna tilt it back in. So what we did is we added these rollers in the front here that just spin, which are just spacers. And that tilting in will then push these together so that this can't come apart and this can't come off the track. And that seemed to work really well. Um, it was just, once this is all together, it was pretty heavy and it was a lot slower because we did run the same winch that we basically do now. And it just didn't seem as promising. So we decided that it'd be best to try like a different design in the rotation and then see if that paid off. And if not, we we're gonna come back to this design because it did work. So moving to what we actually have on the robot, can you take that gold out? So I'll start with the PTO because it's kind of unique actually. So we have the stack motors, we run the simple 36 to 36 so that we don't have to have another 48 on top of this big one. Um, and you can see if I move the PTO a little bit, you can see that the 36 is sliding on this silver square insert. There's two of those in there. And then I don't know if you can even get the camera in there, but there's a gold insert on this 12 tooth gear. So the 12 tooth gear is free spinning on the shaft, which free spins on the D score. So what happens is when we PTO, we're PTOing off of the drivetrain, and then this 36 is gonna be halfway between a silver square insert and the gold insert that's in the 12 tooth gear. So we force them to be free spinning together, and then the 36 is able to power the D score without having a complex ratio here, where we have to have like 36 to 36 with the 12 and then the 48. So it saves a lot of space by being able to do something like this. Um, another thing about D score is that it has a ridiculous amount of torque. So you can see our robot is braced a lot more than usual. This brace is almost vertical with how high up it goes to support the pivot point. Steven talked about how we have the screw joint. And then we have this poly piece in here. <laughs> My finger. <laughs> we have this poly piece in here that goes around the wind shaft. And it goes down to our clamp to support the clamp. And then it goes down to this pivot. So that helps like because the, the pivot is here, the, there's a lot of force like down here and also like pushing out here so this piece would bend so much so it's a half cut three wide instead of just a regular l channel and we have all that bracing there to support it um another thing we did is we ran these back things because when d scores d scoring rings the ring kind of gets stuck against here and it just jams in this section so tuning this was important not just for the intake but also for the d score um the shovel is pretty interesting because we ran like an origami poly shape. This has like what four bends in it to create the shape that we wanted. And it kind of braces itself. It folds around into its own triangle brace, which is just a lot more low profile and a lot stronger than it would be otherwise. We couldn't really fit an L channel in here to do separate pieces and then screw it together. But we could fit one here, so we ran this. Uh, this also helps like getting it precisely how low we need to get over the goal but also to get under the rings because rather than like a skills d score we need to be able to get under the bottom ring when the goal is full so the top ring is pushing into the barb and we're like still getting under it because of these like wedges here as well as just how the geometry is and then we just have winch up with the pt so for the intake pto we Basically how it works is when the Lady Brown is at loading stage and then we have this limit switch here. So we know the ring is going to hit the limit switch and then it's going to come off of it and load. So we wait for it to hit the limit switch, then come off of it. And then for detecting an intake jam, I use velocity is like less than one. Torque is greater than some value that you usually have to tune and it's getting voltage. And then it's going to say now that it's... Um, stalling now it's going to use the intake pto and then to pto off it's just going to be whenever the lady brown pretty much moves outside of a range of the loading height and it's going to pto back on and you can use the intake on uh, we also use this limit switch for color sort i don't know how a good amount of teams use this but we have the limp the optical sensor a lot lower so that it can read the side of the ring giving it like as much time as possible to read the ring meant that we had a lot more consistent 
like detecting the the wrong color. And then we have the optical the limit switch up here that detects the exact moment that the reach that the ring reaches this height, and then it's going to eject it with velocity. Uh, one last thing with our code is we used ODOM, but then like a lot of other teams did this season, we're using uh, distance sensors for we use angular resets, so the robot knows which quadrant of the field it's in based off the auto and the odometry. And then it's using the inertial sensor heading to figure out like which cardinal direction it's closest to. And then it's based off that math, it can figure out which sensors are facing which walls. And it uses just basic trig functions to figure out how it's manipulating those millimeter values to figure out where the robot is. And then, so for our odom, uh, as Steven mentioned earlier, um, with the low hooks, it was really hard to mount this. So we actually have our uh, vertical tracker mounted as part of that long brace from earlier. And we just run that linear. Uh, however, we weren't able to run a linear ODOM for our horizontal tracker. So we run that off of a poly piece that's angled. Uh, and so everything is in this box compact. As you can see, the, even the solenoids are down in the middle of the base. We should have built 